Hey guys, uh, Easter weekend. Happy Easter to you and your families. Today we're talking about future lawn care, April lawn care. It's right around the corner. We're talking about fertility and some additional applications that you could be doing in your very own backyard to ensure you get a positive, good, green spring cleanup. Green up, green up. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Chris Raw at Sun City Lawn Care here in El Paso. And, uh, Look at this yard, guys. Tell me something. Does that not look like crap or what? All them patches and spots, we are here to remedy that problem. That right there is primarily from the dog pee spots from when I had the overseeded the ryegrass. If you guys have been following my channel, what I'm showing you is the transition period from a winter rye back to a Bermuda lawn, okay? Some of y'all are probably looking at this and wondering what the heck is going on with that yard. Well, you guys got to watch some of my previous videos to really understand what's going on. Normally, early February, I spray out my ryegrass. I use a selective herbicide to target the ryegrass so that it starts to die back and then allowing the Bermuda to come out of dormancy. This year, though, this video, these past couple of videos, what I've been doing is showing you an alternative method to uh, removing the ryegrass and allowing the Bermuda to come out of dormancy. And the way we've been doing that is through mowing. The reason why is because I get phone calls every single April with clients who've installed sod uh, back end of the 2023 season, November, December, January, February of 2024, they've got this nice dark green lawn and then it dies, okay? And the Bermuda just dies along with it. The reason for that is because they allow the ryegrass that they planted with the new sod uh, to stay too long. It mats over as it starts to die in our El Paso heat okay as it dies it mats and it flattens and it suffocates and chokes out the bermuda grass underneath it okay what i've been doing is trying to teach you guys how to remedy that problem and the method is by mowing it out okay so i've been mowing as often as i can as low as i can basically just scalping it scalping it scalping it and um if you recall in part of our early videos this area right by the pool, okay, this little spot, I'm gonna zoom in here in a second. This little spot did not germinate last season for my rye overseeding. And it is the greenest spot in the yard that is 100% Bermuda. So as you guys can see, going back, just kind of zoom in here, a lot of patchiness from where the dogs were burning the rye grass, okay? And as we zoom in down here, this is, where the ryegrass did not germinate. This is all Bermuda grass right here. This is a hybrid Bermuda. It's very dense, very thick. Here's some remnants of some of that rye. And underneath all this, there is the Bermuda grass that's coming out of dormancy. There's sprigs all over the place. And we can just, you know, you can see it, okay? There's a combination right here. Some of the rye with some of the Bermuda. There's some more of the underlying Bermuda coming out of dormancy. So again, the concept is to get rid of that rye grass manually by mowing it low. You guys that have got that sod installed at the later part of the year or early 2024, you are going to experience problems if you do not start mowing low. Put your bagging system on your mower, bag all those excessive clippings. You want to purposely start to stress out that turf, okay, to allow the underlying Bermuda sod to come out of dormancy. Here in El Paso, Texas, for those that aren't local, uh, Bermuda typically comes out of dormancy the second to third week of April. That's when we got the consistent 70 degree soil temperature ranges where Bermuda starts to, uh, again, come out of dormancy and start to thrive. So today's video, what I'm gonna do is what is the next process, okay? In addition to mowing low, scalping, bagging that ryegrass and hauling it off to allow the sunlight to penetrate down to the, the turf, heat up the soil and bring the Bermuda out of dormancy, we are forcefully going to expedite this process with, you guessed it, fertilizer, guys. Now, this right here is not what I normally use, which is ammonium sulfate, okay? In the past, again, if you've been watching my videos, I teach homeowners how to lower their pH with the use of a specific fertilizer, particularly a 2100 ammonium sulfate, okay? 
Uh, today, what I'm going to be putting down is a 4600, which is pure urea. It's pure nitrogen, guys. I am forcefully going to push the rest of this ryegrass. I'm going to push the growth so I can mow it out faster, right? I'm going to increase my mowing frequency by pushing the nitrogen, by pushing the growth. And um, that way it gets rid of this rye and to allow the Bermuda, okay? So I'm doing this on purpose, okay? Now let's talk about the fertilizer, okay? Because this time of the year is where you should be starting to fertilize your lawn. Let's talk about fertilizer. Everybody is going to have a different kind of fertilizer they're using. They're gonna buy a different kind of product. Some of you guys are gonna to go to the big box stores and you're gonna grab a bag of fertilizer because it says bag of fertilizer. <laughs> it says fertilizer on it. You have no idea what product you are putting down, okay? Um, unless you're a lawn care enthusiast and you're really in tune with things and you know what's going on, then you might know what you're doing, okay? Or mom or dad, they used to fertilize the lawn every time and this is what they use, or the neighbor, this is what they told you. You get the referrals, right? So let's talk about a little bit about fertilizer, okay? What we try to teach you guys is to base your fertilizer applications based on a soil test. And as you guys can see right here, I've gotten my soil test back and I am sufficient across the board. I've got adequate nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all my macros and micros are sufficient except for my iron, as you can see, is deficient. So I could do an iron application, okay? That's a micro, doesn't necessarily pertain to your everyday kind of fertilizer, okay? Now, what I just applied, let's talk about that, okay? You're not gonna go and get a bag of urea from Home Depot or Lowe's. You have to, you know, order it or get it from a nursery. Um, the reason why I'm using pure urea or 4600, again, is I'm pushing out the uh, remaining ryegrass, primarily. The second reason is I'm sufficient based on my soil test. I don't need to add anything else except for that iron. I really don't even need to add the nitrogen, okay? If I was depleted, and I'll give you another example. Right here, this is a client we're doing a sod insulation for, as you can see, definitely depleted in nitrogen. So she needs a fertilizer application. You wouldn't know this sort of thing unless you pulled cores, got it tested at a lab, and then it tells you exactly what kind of fertilizer to apply. I know my backyard. I know what it needs. I know what it doesn't need. Last year, I fertilized two times throughout the whole season, okay? And I just kind of, it was a test trial to see how it done. My backyard is the test trial for the El Paso City in which we kind of dictate whether or not we use certain fertilizers. Now, again, the ammonium sulfate that I have been using, the 2100, that is simply to bring down my pH. Well, I've done that. Now, what do I utilize? I can utilize any kind of fertilizer I want. Let's talk numbers real quick. When you're getting a bag of fertilizer here, there's three key numbers on the bag. Usually you have to find them. There's small print, like if it's a Scotch brand, you gotta look underneath the bag. And uh, some say, for example, the one I use today is a 4600. That's your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The bag contains 46% nitrogen. The, the fertilizer I was using last year is a 2100. 21% of that bag is nitrogen. So then begs the question, how much do I put down? Because I ask that all the time. Do you know your square footage? You gotta know that information. And how many pounds on the ground of product did you apply? This is very important, guys, because you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it. So we have rules of um, rules of thumb, if you will, standards within the lawn care industry that we abide by. One of those standards is that we do everything, all applications, in thousands per square foot. Okay, every thousand square feet we're measuring the products that we're using. So for example, I literally have 997, some change square footage, okay, plus or minus, because I've, I've built some garden beds. So I round it up, I keep it very simple. My math is a thousand square feet, okay? So all my applications are based on that information. The way we calculate how many pounds of product we use from the fertilizer we buy is some simple math, okay? Remember back in the day when you guys were in high school or middle school and you said, I'm never gonna figure, I'm not gonna use this math. Why are you teaching me this? I won't use it in real life. <laughs> I tell you what, 
Mark my words, if you don't, if you haven't already, you may end up using it. Cause I use geometry all the time now and I hated it back in the day. And all we're gonna do is some multiplication and division today. So some getting back to those standards, the typical standard that we apply for nitrogen applications is three quarters pound, three fourth of a pound per thousand square feet. Okay, that's 0.75, okay, when you turn it into a decimal. And you need to, because we're doing this kind of math. We're not working with fractions here, we're working with decimals. So three fourths a pound uh, per thousand square feet or 0.75 per thousand square feet. That's the first thing, okay? You need to decide if you're gonna do three quarter pound per thousand or you're gonna go at a low rate where you may go at half a pound per thousand square feet. In the summertime, we do what's called spoon feeding where we may literally go to one fourth or 0.25 pounds of product on the ground per thousand square feet. For today's example, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a full pound because I literally used a full pound of uh, urea per thousand square feet in today's application, okay? Um, we're gonna go ahead and use that. So I used a product of a 46% urea, okay? So the first number is the amount that I wanted to put on the ground. I wanted to get down a full pound of nitrogen, that's one. Then you're going to divide that, okay, by your application rate, okay? If your application rate is one pound per thousand square foot today, then you're gonna divide that number by the percent of nitrogen in your product, in your bag, okay? In today's case was 46, 4600, or 0.46, because we're gonna take that 46% nitrogen, turn it into a decimal. So one pound of product divided by 0.46 gives us 2.17 pounds of actual product to put on the ground. That ensures me that I give my full 46% nitrogen okay so we're going to do another example let's say i only wanted to do a half rate okay remember these standards typical application is going to be 0.75 or three quarter pound per thousand or a half rate half pound per thousand square feet you're going to take the desired rate of application in this case and another example is half a pound so 0.5 you're going to divide that by the percent of nitrogen in the bag. So 0.5 divided by, in this case, 0.46 gives us 1.08. All right. So if I go at the half rate, all I need is one pound of product per thousand square feet. Now, say I have 5,000 square feet. All I got to do is take that one pound that I'm going to spread throughout the 1,000 square feet and multiply that times five because I have 5,000 square feet, one times five. Therefore, you should need five pounds of product to cover your 5,000 square feet. Does that make sense? So we're gonna do one more example just to make sure everybody kind of understands what's going on here. Um, let's use a bag called Malorganite, okay? This is another, it's a semi-organic fertilizer, uh, not technically, but we often recommend it because it's a great product, okay? You can dump this whole bag on your yard and not burn a dang thing. So the analysis, the NPK rate on that particular bag is a 640, okay? 6% of that bag is nitrogen, okay? That's that first number, right? So. Going back to the standards, if you're going to go at a half pound, you multiply, oh, I'm sorry, you divide 0.5 by 6%, 0 0.06, that's gonna give you your total pounds of product you should be applying per thousand square feet. Let's go at the high rate, 0.75, okay, three quarter pounds, that's typical application rate. For malorganite, you're gonna take my desired application rate, 0.75 divided by 0.06, equals 12.5. That means I should be applying 12 and a half pounds of that product per thousand square feet. If I'm not mistaken, Malorganite is a, it's a 32 or 36 pound bag, which if you're doing 12 and a half pounds per thousand square feet, you can literally get three applications or more or less close to three full applications um, per bag, okay? And again, if that bag is 12 and a half pounds per thousand square feet and you've got 2,000 square feet, all you do is take your 12 and a half pounds times two, okay? And that's gonna give you your total pounds that you need to put on the ground. If you've got a 5,000 square foot, 10,000, all you do is take that 12 and a half pounds and multiply it times 5,000 square feet or five, okay? 12 and a half pounds times five. 
and that's going to give you the actual pounds on the ground you need in order to get that percent of nitrogen that 0.75 or three quarter pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet hope that fertilizing uh kind of makes sense and if it doesn't leave me a comment below and i will help you decipher your own <laughs> fertilizing product you're using what we are also going to be doing today is an rgs or root growth stimulant application humic acid sea kelp okay that is what we're talking about this early springtime this is part of what I refer to as my uh, soil optimization program. That's where we're focusing on the soil and promoting root growth. Depending on your grass type, whether you're a southern lawn like Bermuda or you're up north in the springtime, uh, here in the south, we're looking to push a lot of growth, okay? We're trying to get ready for spring and before the heat of the summer. If you've got like a northern grass type and you're in that transition zone or up north and you're dealing with turf type tall fescue, for example, in the springtime, you really don't push a lot of growth, okay? Because you're going to end up stressing it out before the heat of the summer. Because in the summertime, you got to remember those those northern grass types, they kind of go into a, a semi-dormancy period. So there's no reason to push a lot of growth, okay? So you might want to go on those half, half rates if you're doing that fertilizer. But the RGS, you can apply that any time of the year. Root growth stimulant, we're focusing on the root development which my backyard needs, okay? Um, and it's not a fertilizer application. It's humic acid and sea kelp. These are some things that you could be applying right now as we're approaching April, um, instead of putting down fertilizer, if you don't need to put down fertilizer based on a soil test. And the additional product I'm gonna be using, and by the way, I'm not a sponsor for any of these, uh, these products. I love these products. I've been using them for years and they work. Okay, this is uh, literally called Foreplay. This is from Eco, Eco Gel. Okay, this is what I use to save on my water and bill right here. Uh, studies do state up to 50% saved on your water output, okay? I've done a study one year, saved hundreds of dollars, okay? Uh, I continue to use it. I put it down about three or four times a season. We got some rain, some cloud coverage today, and I'm hoping the product gets watered in. If not, I'm gonna irrigate either way. How to apply that product, I'll put a link somewhere where you can go and watch that video and if you guys need any of these products i don't again i'm not affiliated with them but i'll go ahead and make it easy for you guys and just read the description outside of that springtime bermuda start pushing growth get out there and start mowing fertilize if you haven't fertilized get your irrigation system operational fix your sprinkler heads if you need to this is spring long care this is april coming up on april long care um, that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, don't forget to hit that bell notification, that subscribe button, and stay tuned for our follow-up videos and the transformation of my very own backyard.